Hi, and welcome to the Urban Peasant, and today we're going to do a Portuguese show. We're going to do nice Portuguese food, and the great thing about Portuguese food is it's so simple, right? It's really simple. Like, the Portuguese people, they are warm and comforting, and you, when you go to Portugal, you feel more comfortable than anywhere I've ever been in Europe. It's a wonderful place to go, and on top of that right now, it's cheap, it's a nice, affordable place to go. And one of the great things they do in Portugal is eat potatoes. Now we're going to cook, we're not just going to cook potatoes, we're going to do a wonderful dessert, we're going to do a great dish, a very favorite dish of this bit just north of Lisbon where they do pork and clams and we're going to do a special things they do with tuna because they catch a lot of tuna there and we're going to do this wonderful soup that is absolutely so ridiculous you're not going to believe it. But that's what we're going to do later. First of all I'm just going to put these potatoes into boil. Now when you cook potatoes, there are things to remember, like whether you put them into hot water or cold water. And the easiest way to remember, nobody ever knows new ones, but old into cold, it rhymes. Now, can we all say that together? Old into cold, got it? Got it, okay, so there we are. Old potatoes into cold water, and then you put the fire on underneath them, bring them up to boil. You put a little bit of salt in later on, and that's how you cook potatoes. I mean, it couldn't be much easier than that, right? No, I should tell you about potatoes, I guess. When I, when I was in the army, I, I, first job they ever give you in the army is peeling potatoes. That's very important to the defense of the nation. If you can't peel potatoes, you're not qualified to protect democracy. And we wanted to go to the store and get, we got a sack of potatoes each, and they would put down no, barber, one sack, and brown, one sack, and off we go dragging. Well, these guys had all been taught to be economical, and they were all peeling potatoes like this and really working at it. And some of them were taking about half an hour to peel one potato. Well, I figured out that what they were checking us was not the number of potatoes that we actually presented, peeled. They didn't weigh and say, this is great, he's peeled and he hasn't been wasteful. They just checked the number you took out of the store. So I found out the quickest way to peel a potato, which was like this. And there was I, 18 years old, suddenly learning all about economics. This was the potato I presented to him. Everybody else had got those nice little round ones, but I kept dragging sack after sack and I got promoted next day. Never peeled another potato since then. So, there you are, we'll put that one in there. This is a great potato, actually, if you ever have a boat or you go on a ship, because they don't slide about when the boat rocks. They don't, they don't roll. We'll just put that in there. Right, now, I'm gonna make this dessert first, because it takes the longest to cook. And this will contradict everything that you ever got told about rice puddings. First of all, you got two kinds of rice you can buy. Let me tip that lot out there and that lot out there. One of them is ordinary short grain rice, this, this one here. And this one is what they call arborio. And that is a, largely comes from Italy. They grow it in Texas now, they grow it in a lot of places. But arborio, it absorbs more stuff. So we are gonna use arborio rice, and the fat one. And we're gonna take a saucepan. Well, we won't take a saucepan, we'll do it in here. We'll take a buttered dish. You can do it on top of the stove if you can get the stove, you know, just an ounce and a half of rice. Now, you know that cooking rice, I've told you before, twice the amount of liquid to like two cups of water to one cup of rice or two cups of milk to one cup of rice. Well, this is one and a half ounces of rice, a very little bit, and a whole pint of cream, more than you ever dreamed of. Single cream, coffee cream, it's fine, or milk. 
one and a half ounces of sugar, about that much, a little bit of sugar like that, and a little bit of butter, about one and a half ounces of butter. All right, just put it in there and give it a stir. All right, that's all you've got to do. And we'll put a little bit of cinnamon in there later. And the secret is, the real secret, is this. This is the peel of a lemon. You know how to peel a lemon. You just do it very gently and try not to, can you see, you go down and try not to get in too much into the white stuff. Just be very careful. And then when you cut it in a long piece like that, just cut it into little strips. And take your time doing it, just, just play. It's one of those nice, gentle, relaxing things to do. And there's an oil, there's a special oil in the, in the peel of, of citrus fruit. And that's what you do. You take this, dead simple, one and a half ounces of rice, one and a half ounces of sugar, a whole pint of milk and a little butter and you put it in the oven. Now it can stay in there. It's going to take at least three quarters of an hour, but you can leave it in there for two hours if you want. And that's how you do it. You've got dessert. Now, before we go any further, I am now going to show you how to make the next course. And this is going to happen while we're at the break. Pork cut up in cubes, all right? A lot of pork. Um, some garlic, here's some garlic, a lot of garlic, really a lot of garlic, and some dry white wine. <laughs> There's no cleaner clean than Prell. And now the original clean of Prell Green is back. Work. Work. Clean. clean. There's no cleaner clean. Prell Green. So welcome back to the Urban Peasant Portuguese Show. Now, you know what we did? We put some potatoes on to boil, old potatoes into cold water, old into cold, right? We put dessert in the oven, a little bit of rice, a lot of cream, and that's just simmering away at 250 degrees, and it can stay in there three quarters of an hour, a couple of hours, so it's just fine. And we put this pork, we cut up some pork cubes, and we put a lot of garlic and some white wine, and already you can see the white wine has started to change the color of the pork. It stopped being red, it's going white because the acid's in the wine. You buy cheap acidic wine for this and you just let it sit in there for overnight if you want to, for an hour if you want to, that's fine. And then to cook this dish, now this comes from just north of Lisbon. See, you always get out of big cities when you go to a, when you go to a country to travel. You go up to a little fishing village, like I remember a place called Peniche. We sat on the beach at a little table, and they dragged boats up, and in the boats there were fish, and out of the fish came, and they said, what would you like? Well, this is a dish. This is a real peasant dish. This is pork and clams, all right? It sounds really unlikely, but it's pork in there with an awful lot of garlic. Now, what we do to cook is put the fire under the pan and let it get good and hot. Now, I told you before, if you get the pan hot before you put things in, they don't stick. Get it hot before you put the oil in. Let it get hot. And if you use a non-stick pan, of course, you don't have to use so much oil. It's entirely up to you. You do it your way. You're the peasant. Me too. And that's what you do. Okay? Now, we've got the pork marinating in white wine and a lot of garlic. So we'll get the pan hot. I'm going to put some olive oil in this pan. There's a lot, of, lot, lot, a lot of olive oil used in Portugal. 
you go to the markets and you can buy lovely, thick, wonderful oil. You buy good cheese, you buy good bread. They eat a lot of bread, a lot of cheese, a lot of fish, a lot of potatoes, nice things. Now here is what we're gonna do with this, this, this pork right now. Just put it out into the, we'll try and keep as much of the marinade as we can in the saucepan because we're going to use it later. We'll just put the pork in there and fry it as fast as you can. Really, really hot. Okay? Let it really go. Look at that fizzing. Now just get it really, really hot. Okay? There's a bit more hiding in there. We'll push that bit out. Now, because there's moisture in the, in the pan, the garlic won't burn. We don't usually put the garlic in until later, but that's okay. So there's, we'll keep that for now. We want to stiffen it up, give it a little spike, because there's a lot of hot peppers used in Portugal. It's very hot in the summer. That's why this is my Portuguese hat. You buy, first thing you do when you go to Portugal is buy a hat, because the sun comes down and you need a hat. Nice, nice Panama hats. And we've got a hot pepper in there to give it some spice. And Portuguese use a bottle sauce called Piri Piri. It's a fancy name, but it's any kind of hot sauce. You buy whatever you like. This one, Louisiana, Tabasco, Louisiana gold, pretty much all the same, right? So there's our pork starting to change color. And the trick with this is that we've got it tenderized. See, we use cheap pork. We use the shoulder of pork. And you always go and buy cheap meat, always tastes better. You buy cheap, cheap meat, okay? And we put in a bay leaf to give it some flavor. And as soon as we get it cooked on the outside, all of it, we start to think about what we're going to do with the rest of it. Now, you can go and buy fresh clams if you can find them. But a lot of people can't. So you get yourself a can opener. And this is how you open clams. And this is not totally authentic, but it's the best that you can do with what you've got. And it tastes wonderful, provided, and really provided, that you don't overcook the clams. They've been cooked enough in the, in the, in the, in the can already. So what we'll do here is just strain off the clam juice. And we're going to use that to make, to make the, the pork and clams stew with. And we'll keep the clams separate to get that out of there. Don't want to cook the lid, do we? So we'll do that. Now, we've got the liquid almost reduced down here. We'll dump in onions. And when we've got in the onions, we'll put a lot, a lot, really be generous with this, of pepper. This is a good mixture of flavors. It's spicy and it's bland, but you put in a lot of pepper. No salt yet, just that. And you can suddenly smell all the garlic and the pork juices and the wine all coming together and that little bit of hot pepper. And the kitchen smells just great. It doesn't have to take a lot of time to do it. It's easy cooking. So I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be back in a flash. It's that time of year again. Hi! He just flew in! Hey, look at me! The annual family get-together. Well, this year, MCI's found a better way to bring everybody together. Introducing Friends and Family Day, Friday, March 19th. A new MCI holiday when friends and family members can save up to 50% on daytime calls. So forget all the craziness. Pick up the phone instead on MCI Friends and Family Day, Friday, March 19th. Can you tell the difference between these contact lenses? They're the same brand, same prescription. But this lens cost 50% less and was delivered right to my home. That's the Lens Express difference. Save on brand name contacts, daily wear, extended wear, disposables, and others. I wouldn't trust these baby blues to just anyone. Call Lens Express. They're terrific. Now you can replace your contacts and save. Call for a free Lens Express catalog. Wednesday night, beginning at 9, celebrate the glory of Ireland in a very special ancient journeys. They came by boats to plunder and pillage, but who were these seafaring warriors of the north, and what part did they play in Ireland's Viking invasion? Then at 10, stay tuned for the beauty of J.P. Donlevy's Ireland. 
It's a primetime St. Patrick's Day celebration on the next Ancient Journeys, Wednesday night, beginning at 9 on TLC. I took diet pills. I lost 34 pounds. Six months later, the weight came back. That's when I decided to get off the diet roller coaster and get on a Nordic track. In fact, Nordic track is so easy to stick with that after five years, seven out of ten Nordic track owners still use their Nordic track skiers three times a week. It's been more than two years. The weight's still off, and I'm still on my Nordic track. You should give Nordic track a try. Call for a free video and brochure. Take weight off and keep it off for good. Nordic Track introduces the weight loss guarantee. Research shows Nordic Track's total body workout burns more calories than exercisers that only work your legs. Hundreds of thousands of people have taken weight off and kept it off with Nordic Track. And we're so confident you'll lose weight too. We guarantee it. We'll guarantee that you'll lose at least 10 pounds in 60 days or your money back. Call now for a free video and brochure. Ask about our 60 day weight loss guarantee. Hi, welcome back to the Pork and Clam Show, the Portuguese Show, the Urban Peasant. Now look what's happening in this pot. I had the heat up high, and let me show you. Look, see, if I push that all aside, the juice is nearly all gone. Now most of the juice has gone into the meat. The meat has absorbed all that lovely white wine and garlic, and it's changed the character of the meat. Now we're going to give it a different character. I'm going to put in some tomatoes and just chop them up roughly, stir them around and let the juices come out of those. I'm going to put in a couple of cloves because cloves are, give it a nice, nice flavor. And I'm just going to stir that all around and let the pork start to go a little bit brown, a little bit crunchy on the outside, like a turkey. Yeah, everybody, or a roast of beef or anything, you know how people like the outside? Well, this is what happens to this if you keep the heat up high. And see, it's starting to change. There it is. Look, let that bit. It's starting to change color already. You can see that, all right? So we got a bay leaf in there. Now, while, during the break, I steamed some beans. I didn't steam them. I got a pot full of boiling water, dropped these green beans in it for four minutes, all right? And then took them out and ran them under cold water so they're nice and crisp and crunchy. And what I'm going to make with them is a salad of tuna. Now, they eat a lot of tuna in Portugal because they catch a lot of tuna. It's one of those great things to do. And this, this kitchen smells absolutely wonderful right now. There's, there's all that wine and garlic and meat cooking and it's, it's like having six dinners all going at once. It's just great. Okay beans into the and arrange them nicely if you if you, i mean if you want to do all this if you want to stack them up around the edge and make them look wonderful that's your it's your kitchen all right let's do that just just to make you feel look at that see have them hanging over the edge a little bit right now to make to look at the colors in this i keep going back to this because i'm just ecstatic about the colors that are all developing in there. Whoop, I lost, that's the bay leaf. We'll put that back in there. We we'll turn the heat down a little bit now and just relax in the smells. Now, beans in there, all right? Now, we need, I'll put that out of the way. Hard boiled eggs, you can either cut them in quarters like that or you can cut them in rings like that it doesn't matter or you can just if you want to you can just chop it up so we got a bit of everything in there all right olives let's put the bean let's put the the eggs in there to start with nice yellow and white see this is what harvest festivals are all about this is what real country cooking is what things look like now olives you can buy olives that have been pitted or you can take olives like this and you know how to get the stone out of an olive, you just lean on it, like that. And there's the stone, the pit that comes out of the middle. Just put it on a board and lean on it. And there's the stone that comes out of the middle. It's not the most elegant thing in the world, but we're not concerned with elegance this morning. We're being country people. We've got olive trees 
I mean, some parts of Portugal, nothing really grows except olives and cork. And so the people don't eat cork. They make stoppers for bottles out of it. And you know, during way back in the 60s, when all those platform shoes were around, got to be a really serious world shortage of cork because people were having shoes made out of them and it got really hard to get corks to go in wine bottles. So we've got olives crushed up in there like this. We've got black olives. We'll put some in with the pit still on them. There, like that. And we put in some tuna. Now, you know, tuna comes in a can and then you get a can opener and you put them together. This is what comes out of it, in case you didn't know. So we'll decorate that all around with some tuna. And we'll leave a big hole in the middle so that we can see what's happening underneath, all those nice little bits of egg and stuff like that. All right. We'll stick a couple more olives around so that everybody knows well, this is no ordinary salad. And we'll put some more black ones around it like that. And then we get some plain old mayo. Now you can make mayo yourself if you're into it, or you can buy it in a jar. If you're on a low calorie diet, you buy low cal mayo. If you don't want to use any mayo at all, then use yogurt and just put it like that. And again, make it look as pretty as you can. Pretend it's a cake. There it is, birthday cake, all right? And then put that on the top, finish it, and you've got things made. You've made a wonderful salad. What you have to do is toss that, but you take it to the table first of all. Explore the recipes and writings of James Barber by ordering your copy of the Urban Peasant Cookbook. James Barber's anecdotes and tips, together with his fast, simple, and affordable recipes, create much more than a cookbook. To receive your copy, send 1895 to The Urban Peasant, P.O. Box 2284, South Burlington, Vermont, 05407-2284. Or charge by phone, 1-800-322-8321. How is the pasta? Almost as good as the DiGiorno pasta we had the other night at home. DiGiorno. Refrigerated pastas and sauces. See, you use big chunks of diced tomato and sliced mushroom just like DiGiorno. And these tortellini have almost as much ricotta and romano cheese as DiGiorno. You are too kind. Hey, you're not serving DiGiorno here now, are you? Certainly not. Too bad. For restaurant fresh taste, you can make reservations or make DiGiorno. And now, enjoy the fresh taste of DiGiorno shredded Parmesan. Need a prescription filled right away? Don't drive. Just call 1-800-433-5900 for the Mail Order Pharmacy, the nation's most technically advanced discount pharmacy. Order all your prescription drugs by phone at huge savings from registered doctors of pharmacy backed by a nationwide computer network. All orders are shipped within 24 hours directly to you. Wherever you are, the Mail Order Pharmacy is just a phone call away. Call 1-800-433-5900 for free details. Hi, welcome back. Portuguese pork and clams. Let's do the pork and clams. Now look, see how that meat has all stewed. It's got a little brown, it's got cooked, and it's got all those wonderful flavors in it. Now we're gonna finish it, okay? So we'll put in the clam juice and the little bit of marinade that was left over. When the heat's been up high all the time, and we just keep it going, we put in the clams and some more clams because we got a lot of people coming, all right? So we'll just stir that all in there, like that. We'll put in a whole lot of chopped cilantro, this Italian parsley if you've got it, Chinese parsley if you've got it, cilantro. This is not whatever you happen to have, but cilantro tastes best, all right? Now look at the colors gonna develop in that. And what's gotta do is get warm through, and it's ready to eat. Now, while that's happening, we'll get the potatoes out, 
And the potatoes. How do you make potatoes Portuguese? Well, I'll show you. You get some piri piri, piri sauce, hot sauce, a little bit on. And see, those potatoes are bland. You know what a potato tastes like. But you zip it up a little bit with a little bit of hot sauce, a little bit of olive oil on the top, and then eat them, and your life will change just like that. Wonderful. So there's that. Now, let's get our rice pudding. Remember that rice pudding we put in the oven at the beginning of the show? Slow, slow cooking. Three quarters of an hour, two hours, doesn't really matter. Well, I'll show you what happened to it. Okay? We put an awful lot of rice in there. And all that cream. A little bit of butter. And there we are. So now we sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on the top of it. Just like that. Not too much, just to make it look pretty. And there it is, this gorgeous rice pudding. They call it arroz doce. And it, doce means sweet. And it is sweet, but look how thick it is. It's almost like a cake. Look at that. I mean, it's not like rice, but this is hot. Not like rice pudding at all. See how, see how firm it is? And then you take it. If you'd like these recipes, send us a stamped, self-addressed envelope to the Urban Peasant, Vancouver, British Columbia, postal code V6B4B2, post office box 5157.